This is NEC PCFX video game console. And this is also NEC PCFX, but for the PC98 computer. If it sounds similar, it's something like 3DO and 3DO Blaster. The PCFX is a successor to the PC Engine, which is known as Turbo Graphics 16 in the US. The PC Engine was released in 1987 and was quite popular in Japan, not so much in the rest of the world though. It was sometimes marketed as a 16-bit console, but unlike the Sega Mega Drive and Super Nintendo, both of which used 16-bit CPUs, the PC Engine had 8-bit CPUs, so it was technically an 8-bit machine. It wasn't slow though, having quite powerful GPUs, it could keep up with both Mega Drive and SNES in certain areas. Even though the PC Engine bears NEC name, it was created in collaboration with another Japanese firm, Hudson Soft. Well, Hudson was a developer and NEC was telling them what to do. The PC Engine was discontinued in 1994 and there was the year when NEC and Hudson Soft released their new console, the PC FX. But let's go a couple of years back yet again. NEC and Hudson started working on a new console in early 90s. They called it Project Tetsujin, in English Iron Man. The Iron Man had a 32-bit RISC CPU made by Hudson and five other processors taking care of sound, graphics and input-output. A prototype of the console was introduced in 1992 in Japan at the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo together with some tech demos and games created by Hudson specifically for Tetsujin, for instance Superstar Soldier 3D, Kuma Soldier or Cyberfighter. All of these games showcased the console can quite capably render 3D polygons and that was one year before Virtual Fighting 4 Arcades was released, which is considered to be the very first 3D fighting game. Sure, Cyberfighter looks and moves horrific, but the PC FX handles the game perfectly fine. Everybody was impressed and it seemed like Hudson is on the right path. However, before the Iron Man was ready for release, rumours about hardware capabilities of Sega Saturn and Sony PlayStation started circulating. NEC started shitting their pants because they had inferior hardware and the manufacturing costs were sky high. They started rethinking their strategy and came up with an idea. The graphical unit cost a lot and then thinking that 3D games look ugly anyway, they dropped the 3D support in the GPU and gave preference to a video decoding. This change made it possible to cut the cost of the console substantially. Another change in the internal design was a better CPU. Instead of Hudson's CPU, any CV8 send was used, which was a lot more powerful, so it was a good call there was. Last and arguably not very good change was overall design. An EC thought if the console would look like some sort of personal computer, it would sell better. Well, it didn't. Sega and Sony released their consoles the same year and Jack and 3DO has been already released a year prior. Initial price was 50,000 yen, compared to Sega Saturn which was only 45, or PlayStation which was 40,000, it wasn't a good start for the PC FX. Another problem was their limited game library. Nobody wanted to make games for a console they couldn't use 3D, which was on the rise at the time, and nobody wanted to be forced to make only games based on anime. About 400,000 units were sold, which is quite bad compared to the competition. Sega sold about 10 million Saturns, Nintendo about 33 million Nintendo 64s, and Sony over 100 million PlayStations. There are two video outputs, Horrible Composite and Less Horrible S-Video. Unfortunately, you don't get an RGB in any form, whether it's a SCART or a component. Naturally, S-Video looks much better than Composite. Unlike the PC Engine, which has only one connector for controllers and you need a splitter to use more, the PC FX has two connectors for controllers. As far as I know, there's only one type of controller and that controller comes with the console. It's one of the worst gamepads I've ever used. It's practically the same gamepad that was used with later models of the PC Engine. Buttons are quite alright, but its D-pad is the worst. Compared to Mega Drive's or Saturn's gamepad, it's practically unusable. There are three slots all around the console made for future expansion cards. As far as I know, there are just three, backup memory, SCSI adapter and mouse. Each slot has a different size, and as such, every slot is for a different type of expansion card.
The PCFX uses two screen modes. The first has got resolution 256 x 224 and the second 320 x 224 and 16 million colors. It's quite low compared to, for instance, Saturn, which could display 704 x 224, or PlayStation, which could display 640 x 480. NEC was probably quite confident the PCFX is gonna be successful, so they have developed two cards for DOS. One card for NEC's own PC-98, which is understandably a lot rarer than the console itself, and one for an IBM PC, which is even rarer. I've got the one for the PC-98, it's a CBOS card, which is sort of incompatible equivalent to an ISA in an IBM world. The card goes here. Then it needs this little program to initialize the card. The signal is coming out of the card directly, it doesn't need to be connected to a VGA card like for instance 3DO Blaster, and it doesn't need a sound card like for instance 3DO Blaster. On the flip side, you need an additional tally or something that can handle composite or S-video signal. Now games. There were about three games released for the PCFX. If you can call them games, lots of them are more like interactive movies and some of them not even interactive. Thanks to the decision to remove the 3D support, the PCFX is heavily dependent on pre-rendered videos and graphics which take a lot of CD space. Speaking of CDs, game boxes are quite peculiar, I've never seen anything like this before. Developers were ordered by NEC to focus on popular anime and manga titles while making games, so they did. At first it looks great, you get long anime intros and in-game videos, but that's usually what there is, videos. After a while it starts to get really boring, if I wanted to watch anime, I can turn on my telly and watch anime all day long, at least in Japan. On the flip side, it always adds some sort of backstory to most basic games, such as shoot em ups, which are not exactly known for being story driven. That said, I expect at least basic level of interactivity in a video game, which I don't get in, for instance Battle Heat, which is one of the first games released for the PCFX. Again, it looks cracking at first, nice anime intro, then some anime videos, however, the gameplay is utter rubbish. I've probably never played a worse fighting game than this. Even bloody Street Fighter the movie is much better. But let's not be too harsh here, there are even good games, mostly RPGs and adventure games. But since the console was focused mainly on anime and manga, you can expect a number of hentai games as well. Paradoxically, some games were censored for some reason. For instance, Dragon Knight 4, which came out in 1994 for DOS, has been re-released for the PCFX, PlayStation and Saturn in a censored version. I've played the Dragon Knight 4 for DOS and right at the beginning you've got this scene which is nowhere to find in a PCFX version. RPGs and adventure games look great, the problem is, they're all in Japanese. Unless you speak and read Japanese, you won't enjoy any of them. I found some English translations online, but only for four games. Hello. 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 
くるみちゃんじゃないそれじゃあこの男の子がパ私ここでウェイトレスのバイトしてる国母霊界だはい。As you can see, the text in the video is completely illegible. Let's have a gander at the original DOS version and let's compare the two. The DOS version is a little bit of 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 a little bit ああ。喋ってるんだがこれから使うのか電池を取り替えてくれ聞こえるか電池を変えてくれでんおいふでつかわっですゲーム JB ヘロルド since the plot is set in Chicago and there are American actors I was wondering if the game could be in English, but no, it's again dubbed in Japanese and you can't change it. Let's go back to my first game for a bit, Battle Heat. When I put the game in, I've noticed the intro is somewhat choppy, the sound was cutting out and dragging behind the video, it was terrible. Then I tried Fallen Story and it was practically the same, but the game itself was running alright. And in case of Return to Zork, it didn't even get to an intro. I thought it may be an old laser or a dirty lens. 
Cleaning the lands didn't help, but there was yet another option. Sometimes you may be able to increase power of the laser, and in this case, it was quite easy actually. I had to take off this side panel and it exposed these potentiometers. The one in the middle is the one I need. I just had to turn it a bit counterclockwise and... The battle heat is running perfectly fine. Once the laser has been quote unquote fixed, I started trying different games and then I got to this. When you look at the back of the box, you may reckon it's some sort of anime or documentary, and you'd be right, it's a sort of documentary about anime. It's not even remotely interactive, it's just a bunch of videos with its own player of sorts. Watching these videos, I've come up with an idea. What if it can read video CDs? A user guide doesn't say anything about that, so I dug out my lot of the Rings video CD, put it in, and nothing. Since they were boasting about how good the PCFX is for handling and decoding video, they could have taken them one little step further and made it to play video CDs. What's a bit strange, the console and the games were developed for the Japanese market and it was never planned to be released worldwide, so why some games use English in setup and stuff, even games exclusively made for the PCFX? Another minor drawback is that the PCFX is not backward compatible with the PC Engine. It could have helped sales a bit. Apart from proprietary games, the PCFX is able to read audio CD, photo CD and CDG. The PCFX didn't use any copyright protection, so you can burn CDs to your heart's desire. However, there's one drawback. Burning the PCFX CDs is not as straightforward as it would seem. I found out some programs won't burn the CDs at all and fail during the burning. Clone CD was working perfectly fine and burnt any CD for the PCFX without problems. There are a couple of emulators out there. My favorite is Madnafen, which is an acronym for My Emulator Doesn't Need a Freaking Excellent Name. It's very easy to configure and run games and every game works perfectly fine, so if you want to give the PCFX a try, you may start here. Well, to wrap this up, the PCFX started as a promising project, but Poxy Decisions killed it way before it was released. No 3D support, released too late, released only in Japan, no very good design, an atrocious game library. If it were released two years prior, worldwide, and as a tetogen, I reckon it may have been successful. Is it worth getting then? As a gaming platform, definitely not. There's only about 60 games, half of which is horrible, and they're all in Japanese. Some games are not even games, and it's far cry from cheap. There are definitely some good games, but not enough, and not good enough to justify the nowadays price. If you collect old consoles, it's a very nice addition to your collection. If you don't, don't even bother. There's not a single exclusive game that would be so good you'd have to buy the console just for that, as I did back in the day with GameCube just because of Resident Evil Remake, or Saturn just because of Virtua Fighter. And that's it for today. 
If you're interested, try the emulator first and then decide if you want to spend money on the actual hardware. Bye for now.